Now we move to uh, Mr. Simon Loretz, who is online, and I kindly ask you to press the speak button and address the MEPs. Okay, thank you for having me as well. Uh, let me start with some positive feedback to the work the Commission has been doing and what well, is continuing to do. So basically, what I really appreciate is that the approach has always been to put forward a, a concrete proposal and then try to agree on it, rather than just agreeing on a political reform uh, without agreeing on what we are agreeing on. I think this is the right uh, approach, and even if it doesn't produce immediate results, as in the CCTP case, uh, we can still learn for the future process. That said, the, the policy goals for the BFIT are very, very ambitious and well intended, but there are several trade offs between them. And let me put a few examples out there. So basically, if we want to tackle tax avoidance, it will come at the cost of simplicity. And if you completely manage to kill all the tax avoidance, you have a more tax burden and have a stronger effect on the investment decisions. The reallocation of taxing rights can improve the fairness of the distribution of tax revenues, but this will imply a substantial redistribution of tax revenues. And therefore, uh, it's illusionary to think that you can produce a tax reform without creating winners and losers. And this is both at the firm level at, and at the member state level. So this needs to be basically keep, kept in mind. The final decision on the design of the BFIT needs to weigh the, the, these trade-offs against each other. And it's not us, not the academic community who can basically put forward an ideal proposal, but it's a, a political decision basically to, to weigh these trade-offs and give more weights to one or to the other goals. Let's start with the scope of the, of the BFIT. And um, both had already mentioned like that it should be optional and so on. I mean, the introduction of a separate set of tax rules for large multinationals uh, is basically introducing a separate additional tax system. And this cannot be seen as a simplification for the, the tax authorities. So new tax rules should be designed well enough that they can apply for all business. And a coexistence creates additional administrative stuff for the, the, the policy, like the, the tax administration, and it also creates an uneven level playing field between those who actually are in the system or out of the system. So basically, I would strongly advocate for having a, a rule which is simple enough that it can be applied to everybody. Uh, the single corporate tax rule book is definitely something which is a desirable goal. And only very noticeable differences in the economic uh, fundamentals in the member state should translate into different tax base definitions. So, for example, like the tax depreciation of a, a certain type of asset should be the same in each member state. There is, it's much more questionable whether you need to have like a full harmonization of additional tax incentives, like incentives for R&D investment or for green investment. But such investment could be kept at a member state level and can be applied after we have calculated like a harmonized tax base according to common rules. So in simple words, basically have a, a basic definition of a common corporate tax base and then leave it to the member states to grant additional deductions or exemptions. And these obviously need to be in line with the state aid rules. The second important point is to, to move from the separate accounting to unitary taxation. That will solve some problems of the existing tax system, uh, but will cost and create new distortions. So the most obvious advantages uh, of consolidating the group-wide tax base are that we eliminate profit shifting and we also eliminate the need for finding arm's length prices. So this is uh, the most important benefit. And the second important benefit has already been mentioned, that's the, the implicit consolidation. So that's basically solving the, the problem of the lack of international loss consolidation. That's something which is very desirable. But these two improvements come at the cost of the need that we need to have a, a, a definition of 
who is in the multinational group and who is not in there. We have a potential revenue loss of the international loss consolidation and we also need to find a rule to allocate the, the tax base to the member states. So we need formula apportionment. And the need of formula apportionment is, uh, basically the idea is simple, but it is more tricky when you start to look at it. You need to define apportionment factors. So think about uh, invested capitals, employees, or sales by destination, and then allocate the tax base to the member states. And the idea is to, to match the value creation. But whatever you do, you create new distortions, and there's two reasons for that. The first one is, if you have a common uh, factors, you assume that the, the factors translate into tax base to the same amount in each member state and in each year. So this is kind of a, a very heroic assumption. And the second thing is that the factor apportionment will define the, the tax burden and therefore there's always a new incentive for multinationals to manipulate the, their allocation. So basically, yet another problem is that if you have a formula apportionment, this will create a winners and losers and redistribution between the member states. So some member states will win and some will lose. So this needs to be kept in mind when defining the factors. And a last important aspect is that we have a European-wide harmonization and we also need to keep in mind that this will not solve the problem with the interactions uh, with non-European entities. And this implies that arm's length principle will continue to apply there and here there's a, a really strong and clear benefit of having a harmonized treatment of how we deal with non-European entities. So like having harmonization of arm's length transaction without, with non-European uh, entities is definitely one of the benefits. But that's pretty much all I want to say. Let me sum up with uh, the overall conclusion that it's still a long way to go. And we need to be aware that we create winners and losers, and it's up to the policymaker to decide on which of the, the conflicting goals are more important. What we should avoid is to try to overload the, the BFIT and have too complicated rules uh, with the idea in mind to attempt all goals at the same time. Thank you.